Okay, great. So I have two o'clock. So good afternoon, everybody. Uh, just to make sure everybody here is for SNF2 Lab, CRN21160. Yeah? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Excellent. Okay. So let me just call rule. We'll do an introduction, then we'll start. Akila James. Uh huh. Uh, Alicia. Suchet. Alicia's not here. I stepped out for some tea. Alina. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Avril. Avril stepped out for a cup of tea. Kavita. Kavita stepped out for a cup of tea. Malika. Not here. M Miash. Present, sir. Says Misha. Misha. Okay, I have it. Let me change it. I have it wrong on my. Um... Yes, sir. Mm. M E S O. Okay. Yeah. Let me correct that immediately. Mm -hmm. Misha. Okay, great, Michelle. Uh, Miranda. All right, Miranda stepped out. Racine. Racine stepped out. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah, present. Excellent. Rayon. Rayon stepped out. Renee. All right, Sadie. Mm -hmm. Samantha. Mm -hmm. Sapphire. Mm -hmm. Shakira. Present, sir. Uh huh. Shaloma. Present, sir. Uh huh. Shanice. Uh, Shanice Mohammed and Shanice Prince. Uh, Tiola. And Venetia. Present, Present of course. Sir. Yeah, yeah, great. All right, let me just, for Misha, let me just uh, edit the name. Sir, I don't know if you, you called my name before, um, Kavita Mohammed. Okay, just hold on one minute, Kavita. I'm just doing something. I'll get back to the name shortly, okay?
Right, great. So welcome everyone to the uh, SNF class. Uh, once we finish the introductions, we'll revisit the rule and see, um, just update for any persons who might have come in late. So for last class day, I was called away on short notice, so we didn't have class. So you will be responsible, however, for the lab itself. A recording of the session has been placed right here. So you can have a look at the recording of the lab session. And in terms of how the labs proceed, what you'll be asked to do, all you have to do is look at the part that says students are expected to every week. And it tells you specifically what to do. So join Zoom meeting. So bravo for uh, the 15 persons who have done the same. Uh, review the PowerPoint notes. Here it is, PowerPoint notes. So you click on it, have a look, and view the web links on smear typing. So this is blood smear and blood typing and the demonstration. Then, of course, you have to uh, complete the group activity and then place any Dropbox. So for last week, so you just have a look at the session. Once you're at your leisure, the recorded session from, from last week and um, do have a, a do of this of the group activity. Now the group activity, usually it is completed, we are mandated to give it within a two, uh, within a, within a two hour, it's supposed to complete it within a two hour frame, time frame within the class itself. But from some of my other classes, found that was a little too tight. You all find that's a little too tight to complete? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, some people are telling me because of the fact that the groups, you know, they're scattered around persons, different areas. It was a little, little tight. So I have acquiesced to your request. I, I hear you, and it makes sense. So I will be giving you all two days to actually complete it. All right. So this one, I'll be giving you till the 17th because it's the first one, you know. So this one is due on the 17th. So if you look at the Dropbox itself, right, it is due at 2 p.m. on Sunday, as is the, the lab which we will be doing this week, which is this one here. This one will also be doing, this is the heart and blood vessels. This one is also due on Sunday. So you have two labs due. So you're given a four day period because of the fact it's two labs, yeah? So that way. So that way you'll have, you'll have a chance to finish it. So before we proceed any further along, since it's the first day of class, okay, I'm seeing a hand up, go ahead. Somebody has a hand yes, up. Sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, hi. Miranda. Um, just for a moment, this is to be done in our group or individually? I, I joined a little later, not sure if you crossed that part. Oh, it's uh, oh, so all the labs are group activities. Do you all okay. have do you all have um, lecture groups for your project? No, no sir. Uh, okay, all right. Well then, we could form some groups. That'll be very straightforward. Um, I'll just do that alphabetically, and so it's very simple. It'll be four groups of five alphabetically. There are twenty persons in this class, so. As soon as the class is over, I'll put up the list, the group listings. I'll put it up right, well, it doesn't say, right here uh, under the announcements, you'll see it. Or I'll put it up in the announcements for that matter to make life simpler, 132. So let's look up, <clears throat> up at this area. About within half hour after class is finished and you'll see the listings. Um, your lab listings, okay? So all of the labs will be recorded. So for persons who might, for whatever reason, if you miss a class or you're late or what have you not, the labs will be um, recorded. And within a week, usually, ideally on a day, but sometimes it gives a little issue in the conversion because it's YouTube videos. So within a week, you'd see just like this one, You'll see right at the bottom here in terms of the recording of the Zoom class. All right, so you could always, if you come in late or what have you not, you could always review it. Please don't feel how to come late to my labs. If it have one minute for class and you still come, I would applaud your effort. I don't have any problems with that at all. 
right? I, I always applaud effort. I find that is always a great thing. And uh, to me, once you make the effort for the class, yeah, that is all that really, that, you know, that is significant. Uh, could someone send me the meeting ID? No, it doesn't have a meeting ID, it's just a link. So just go to the, um, and, uh, just go to the e-classroom, there's a link there. And there, there is a, there is a Zoom link really. But let's go to the e-classroom. I want to join on my computer, go to the e-classroom and click on the link for the class. And Avril, I want to join the meeting. <laughs> yeah. So Avril, yeah. Just go to the e-classroom um, site and well, wait. That's for the Zoom meeting. The meeting ID. Okay, I'm a little confused how it is. You're sending it on Zoom and you're asking for the meeting ID. Hmm. Okay. All right. So let, let's see if we could do some introduction since today's the first day of class. I will start off. So my name is Dr. Patrick Campbell. In terms of my background, I did my BS in biology at Morehouse College in Atlanta. Then I went on to Morehouse School of Medicine where I did my PhD in the biomedical sciences, specifically in the area of immunology, HIV. Um, my thesis work was on the, on the manipulation of an accessory protein of HIV called NEF. So what, what my work together with my colleagues, what we did, we found that by varying or altering this protein, you could actually influence the replication of the virus and then hence control its spread. All right, so I was over there in the States for a bit and Costa had given me a call and I said, thank you very much. And I came back down and I've been here for the last 10 years or so. I've enjoyed it ever since. All right, so that's my background. So let me hear from you all if you would. So just if you would just put, say your name, where you're from, it could be general, you could say north, south, east, west, you don't have to be very specific. So your name, where you're from, and something you like to do that ideally is not illegal, immoral, or fattening, yeah? So let's start. Who wants to start? Shanice, you want to start? Change your name on the, to the top of my Zoom list. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hi, my name is Shanice Mohammed. I'm from Paul, Spain. Currently, um, I'm a returning student to Costat. I took a few years off due to some family issues. Nothing wrong with that. So, Nothing wrong with that. The main thing is you so came back. I'm back. Yeah, I'm back trying to finish off the nursing degree. Excellent. Well done, Shanice. So what do you like to do? Let me hear you. Something you like I, to I do a lot of art. You, you really, you paint and, and so design. On. No, no, not that kind of not that kind mm. of art. Um, crafting. Oh, crafting! Oh, that's very good. That's very good. Um, it's a nice. I mean, you have a creative mind. It'll get you very fine life. Thank you very mm. much, Shanice. Thank you, Akila. Yes, if you just introduce yourself, say your name. Uh, where my you name from? is Akila James. I am twenty-five years old. I am from Arima. This is, I think, my second year and cost that I do an associate's degree in general medicine. And I would like to teach myself how to bake and decorate cakes. What you're saying, you like cakes and so on. Oh, I so want to you want to learn how to do it? I, mean, I you... know how to make it, but I want to learn how to decorate it. Oh, decorate, yeah, that's very good. Okay, thanks, Akila. Alicia, go ahead. Now, don't feel pressured. Eh? If you don't want to say anything, just say, say I good, or, or just don't respond. I wouldn't be mad at you. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alicia Suchet, and I am from the San Grandi area. And well, I'm doing my bachelor's in nursing, and I like traveling. Ah, in terms of traveling, well, your style was cramped for the last two years or so. Where's the furthest you've gone in terms of your travels? So the furthest I for now is I went last, I went Panama. What you saying? What struck you the most about Panama? You know, that we find different to Trinidad and Tobago. What I found was, you know, you remember the most about Panama. City shopping. 
Mm, I hear you. Uh, so, they're already like cheap compared to um. Trinidad. Over here, mm, my yeah. I had a friend who went there as well, and he told me that they have a lot of fruits. That is true. All over the place they sell. Yes. Yeah. And all kind of weird like, fruits we never even see before. Yeah. <laughs> That's very good. Thanks, Alicia. Okay. okay. Then. All right, uh, Akila. I went already. Oh, sorry. I'm just going down the list. My bad. Alina. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alina Mohammed. I'm from the Sangre Grande region. I enjoy any kind of sporting activity. I love outdoors and adventurous stuff. Um, and I like to lime. What are you saying? Is is there an Alina Mohammed that plays for West Indies? West Indies woman team woman's team? Anissa Mohammed. Oh, Anissa. You're making joke. What you saying? Yeah. We food, but we don't know. Look at that. Mm -mm. What you have? That is great. That is great. <laughs> okay, Alina. Thanks a lot. Okay, Abbasson. Hi. So, it, um, my name is Shakira, actually. Avison is my middle name. Oh, my bad. I just call any names off of the Zoom now. That's what I use. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Um, well, right. My name is Shakira. I am 21. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually love, okay, I do my nursing degree in, um, associate degree in general nursing. I love netball. I love any outdoor activity, to be honest. Mm hmm I just like being active. That's just it. I don't like to be home doing nothing. So how you manage so, with COVID? How you manage with COVID that, in terms of cramping your style? Um, actually, to be honest, I was one of the the ones making it bad for the others. Mm. So yeah, I was outside. Uh -huh. Like I was hiking, I mm -hmm, was mm -hmm. playing that ball, I was sweating. I was doing all kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. COVID I never really slowed me down. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. I recently got an injury, mm -hmm. um, an M M M MCL tear. You mean, you can joke. Well, at least it no. wasn't the ACL. Yeah, yeah right. it so. wasn't. So I'm currently doing therapy things. That's the mm. only thing that's slowing me down, but not really slowing me down because I'm still active with it. Is it, was it, is it your major leg, your, your dominant leg or your non-dominant leg? It's my left leg, leg now. Your left leg. Mm. Yeah, but it was putting pressure on the right leg. So like I was free Correct. to, you know, mm -hmm. walk on it mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, nothing can really slow me down because I hear you. I guess, yeah. And so it that's healing. really. It healing. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it, yeah, it's healing way better than last year. So uh -huh. I believe my mom told me that was the the um the consequence of being outside while you're supposed to be inside. <laughs> yeah, mothers will say that. Okay, no problem. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot. All right, let me switch to the um to my role. So let me see who has gone: Akila, Alicia, Alina, Avril, Kavita, Malika. I didn't go through. Who's that one? <laughs> Avril. Avril, okay, go ahead, Avril. Hi, my name is Avril Francis. I'm currently pursuing an associate degree in general nursing. Um, in my spare time, I'm a makeup artist. What you saying? It's, yeah. You just do it for family and friends, or you just do it professionally? No, mm -hmm. no that's my income. That is great. You know. That is really great, man. That is really great. It's always never, and you're good at it, I'm guessing. Great. That is really good. That is really good. So, that is, like, she could put a thing there. Anybody who wants makeup done and so on, Avril Francis is the person to check. You have a Facebook page and so on. You have any page? I have an Instagram page. You have an Instagram Avril, page. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Avril's makeup at the street. Excellent. All right, Avril, looking for greater things for you, both in the nursing field and in the field of makeup. Re, thanks very much. Thank you, sir. Uh huh. Sir, All right. Did yes? you call my name? Um, I heard you say Kavita once, but I didn't go. Okay, Kavita. Sorry, I'm going through my, my role list now. That is why before I was looking at the Zoom, but I was getting tied up like a market crab. So I, was, so I switched to my uh, role. So, Kavita, go ahead. Uh, no. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, I'm Kavita Mohammed. I'm doing my bachelor's in science and nursing. Um, 
I I'm a bit of a loner. I I like to associate with people and socialize, but only if I li limited amount of time. And but I do more better by myself. I love cooking, and I'm more obsessed with cooking. And I love watching recipes around the world and all of that. I just like anything cooking related. I'm good with it. And yeah, that is basically me. What you're saying, what you, you know yourself, that is very good. You know, a lot of people don't know themselves and so on. So, so why does you could cook Kavita? You know, what is your best dish? You know, something that anytime you cook it, people just be like, ah, boy, you have sweet hand there, boy. What, which one is that, well, Kavita? Mm. Well, my favorite dish, which is the most simplest, <laughs> and mm -hmm. um, is pilau, actually. That is my mm. favorite dish since I small. And that is one dish I mastered because it's my favorite, you know? What's the secret behind but, a good pilau? Um, the coconut milk. Mm, fresh coconut milk. Mm, yeah. You don't do the maggi. No, I, I use you. fresh coconut milk mm -hmm. and seasoning, fresh seasoning. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Kavita. All right, Malika. Hi, good day, everyone. My name is Malika Fields. I am 25 years of age. I have a daughter, 15 months old. Show you here in the background. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And um, <laughs> I am pursuing bachelor's degree in general nursing. I like to cook. I like costume design, making wire breasts to be exact. And I have an online clothes boutique. Really? Yeah, what are you saying? <laughs> so you're an appellenting man. That is great, man. <laughs> Right, right, right. So excellent. After making the extra money, so I lay in cost that, you know. Not only in cost that, it just pursue it. There's nothing wrong with having a secondary well, income with, all through life. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was talking to to one of those um nurses. He was in his final year. He was telling me that. Talking to him just mo um, Monday. And he was telling me how they, yeah, they cut this type. And I was like, things tight, yeah. things tight. Yeah. I hear you, Malika. Well done. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Misha? Yes, sir. Yeah, if you would just introduce, you introduce yourself already? No, sir. Okay, go ahead. Your name, where you're from, something you like to do. Um, my name is Misha Raya. I'm from Sunny Gandhi. Um, doing a um, degree in general listen, and I like Netflix. Mm. What's the best movie you see recently on Netflix? Um, right now I'm not watching Netflix. I'm watching The Rookie mm -hmm. on our website. It's mm -hmm. a police series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, that's good, man. Song, yeah, it's always good to have something, you know, to take your mind away from the current things. Well done. Miranda? Miranda Short? Uh, she probably just stepped out for a cup of tea. No, no, no. All right. Oh. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Understood. Yeah. Go ahead. I, yes. Good day, everyone. My name is Marat Short. I am from the East, and I like doing hair and just slimming and having fun with my kids. I don't get to do hair often because I have them to stay about, but I'm also doing my uh, associate degree in general. That's very good, friends. man. In terms of hair, you could do braiding and then keen you know, and all yeah, that kind of thing. Course, you have some nimble yeah. fingers then, yeah? <laughs> yes. That's very good. Thanks very much, Miranda. All right, Racine. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Racine. I am currently doing my associates in general nursing. I like to watch a lot of movies, well, spin-offs. I am very into watching like CSI and stuff like that and trying to figure out who killed who and how the person died. Um, in my spare time, I make candles into the process of opening a business page for candle making mm -hmm. and also a mother of two. That's very good, man. That's very good. That's a good example for your young ones when they see mommy, you know, progressing and so on. You know, it always seems, you know, as oftentimes when I when I do this exercise and I ask people what they're doing, it seems then that, you know, we like, 
probably need to establish like a site, you know, where people could come and, and see the different things that, you know, um, the business ventures that, you know, the custard students have. So like a one-stop shop kind of thing. Thanks a lot. Okay, Rion. Hi, I am Rayon Sandy. I am 34 years of age and I'm from Guyana, but currently residing in Trinidad at Piaco. I am a, uh, we currently waiting for my associates in general nursing. And one of the things I really enjoy is actually karaoke, even though I'm not a good singer, um, karaoke is the best thing for me. Rayon, what is the best song you could sing? What do you like to sing when you go karaoke? Um, I'm kind of an old-fashioned kind of guy. Mm -hmm. So and I listen to lots of like uh, Luther Vandross. Ah, Luther, so Luther. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I know him well. I know him well. Thanks a lot, there, Rayon. Great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Rene. Let's call him more. Rene, call him more. All right, Renee probably stepped out for a cup of tea. Uh, Sadie. Oh, I see Renee now. Yeah, joining back, no problem. Sadie. Hi, good day, everyone. Uh, my name is Sadie Tinto. I'm from Talparo. I enjoy exercising and sewing. What are you saying? In terms of exercising and sewing, sewing, yeah, my mother was a seamstress, so I know all about that. I always find it fascinating. Or you could just take a piece of cloth, measure, tingling, ling, tingling, ling, cut in these weird shapes, and then boom, yes. you have a pants and so on. So you use, use paper pattern or you, or you use boss and draw it on the cloth. Let me hear you. So I recently started doing my okay. own thing. So I would do like my daughter, school uniform and stuff, but I would what use the saying? paper pattern. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a little safety net there. As a yeah. when you're unless you're a real boy, so you know you draw it out and the cloth and so on. No, I ain't reached there yet. <laughs> yeah, no. get there. Indeed, indeed. Thanks a lot. Okay. okay. Um, Samantha. Oh, sorry, before we come to you, Samantha, Renee, yes, you, you Let me see someone come up in the chat. Sorry, internet problem. No problem, Miranda, as well. No problem. Um, that is Rennie. Samantha. That's okay. Uh, understood. Samantha. Oh, I don't know if it was. That should be good understood in the, in the chat. Okay, probably just a little issue there as well with Samantha. Uh, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Hi, good day. My name is Sophia McDonald. Um, I'm currently doing my bachelor's in psychiatric medicine and I'm from Five Rivers. What are you saying? So what does it like to do? Let me hear you. In, in your spare time, what do you like to do? So honestly, I just like to spend time with friends and family and go to the beach. The beach is my happy place. I hear you, I hear you, and it's very healthy as well in terms of our salt water and the spray and so on. I in mind with you, and I mean, you're a very social person. You get along well with others. You're in the right field for it. Thanks a lot, Samantha. Oh, oh sorry, Sophia. that was Sophia. Um, Shakira. Yes, sir, you think I went already? I clearly didn't remember also when I asked twice. I just going through, <laughs> I going through my list in here. I switched, I was initially doing it off of the um off of the Zoom, you know, list, and then I switched to my um my roster. So that's why. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay, Shakira, not an issue. Shaloma. I think Shaloma, you went already as well. No. Um, okay, go ahead. Good, morning. good afternoon. Sorry. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Mm -hmm. 
I am Shaloma Belil. I am 18. I am from Coover. I am doing my associate degree in nursing and I love to sing in my spare time. Oh, what do you like to do? Sorry, I didn't catch you. Sing. Sing? What are you saying? Well, you know, I wouldn't ask <laughs> you to sing, but what 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 yeah. particularly you like to sing? You know, like what genre? Yeah, slow music, opera. Any genre. Huh? Any anything. Anything. Any genre, any... Could you yeah. could you do um Ave Maria? Oh my gosh. Nah, I good. I sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I'm not asking you. I mean, if you could do it, as in if you have the capability of doing it, I would, I'm not asking you to say it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you could. Okay. The yeah. reason why I say that, you know, that 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 song, you know, when you sing it, oh, yeah. etc., yeah, yeah, yeah. it shows off your range. Yeah. yeah, you really need a powerful uh, voice. So that's why I always like to ask people if we could sing Ave yeah. Maria. Um, yeah. That was yeah. That is great. Okay, well done, Shaluma. Uh, Shanice, Shanice went already. Shanice. Yes, I did. Okay, great. Um, Shanice Prince. Oh yeah, Shanice mom, I think you went first, actually. Shanice Prince. Well, Shanice Prince stepped out for a cup of tea. Uh, Teola Rodney. I think Teola Rodney stepped out for a cup of tea. And Venicia. Hi everyone, my name is Venicia. I'm 19 and I'm from Separia. I'm currently pursuing my associate's degree in general nursing. And I like to do two things. I have a small business in baking and decorating cakes, and I like to play instruments. What? What instrument? In part, any particular instrument? Well, right now I'm learning to play keyboard, but I've been playing the violin for at least ten to twelve years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. I mean, you have long fingers or short fingers? Kind of short, but I make it work. I was also going to say, yeah, no, for the violin, my father always used to tell me that, yeah, it's good to have long fingers. It, it makes it that much easier. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks a lot. Did we miss anybody in terms of... Um, in, in terms of introductions? All right, so good. We didn't miss anybody. Great. All right, so it's always good, you know, to touch home base with everybody. All right, so let's go in terms of um, for today. So we're going to look at the lab session, the heart and blood vessels. You probably would have done this with your lecturer already because the labs actually follow on um, like two weeks on from the lecture itself. Okay, so let's go. Any questions um, before we start? Anybody have any questions? All right, so we address any issues at the end, okay? All right, so the heart, is the heart important? And one of the things, do feel free to speak, and um, I will say this much, whatever you say, I will always listen to it attentively, and I will not laugh at you. If ever I laugh at something you say, I will give you $200 for lunch, all right? because that would be exceedingly unprofessional of me to do something like that. And I always remember back in, when I was in school, in uh, Form 3 physics, I said something. I always remember the teacher, you know, he made a joke on it. And I never said anything again in class. And, you know, so uh, always, always feel free to, to speak. I always remember him. I was so glad to take CXC um, at, in Form 5. And actually, when I went to 11, I didn't even touch physics. I went to biology. So I suppose uh, I have him to thank for my love of biology because he turned me off of physics. Yeah, somebody had a hand up just now. I missed it while I was speaking. Uh, somebody wanted to say something? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so what's the easiest way to make you laugh? <laughs> good one, good one. In relation to specifically, I, I should qualify that term. Um, in relation to something, you know, you say as related to a question or some something you're expressing. So not just something to laugh. I hear you. I'm, yeah, <laughs> good yeah, one yeah. There. I mean, if I just I mean, make I you laugh, it. yeah, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Good one, good one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I have to qualify that statement then in relation to, let's say, a response you make to a question or something we're doing. That's a good point there. Yeah, got me to laugh and get to the, to the good one there. Okay, so let's go. The heart. 
The heart is very important. What organ system does the heart belong to? Cardiovascular. Cardiovascular system, very good. How many organ systems do we have? 11 or 12? We have 11 or 12? Uh-uh, it's an exact science. So 11. 11, yes. And how, do, how would we remember? Those who did it with me, they'll probably remember there's a word on slice RRM. Let me type it in the chat. U-N-S-L-I-C-E-D-R-M-M. -M. You know, I just type it in the, in the chat. Um, and each one of those letters stand for one of the organ systems. Let's just touch it briefly before we continue with the heart. What does the U stand for? Relating to your kidneys, your urinary. your urinary system. Very good. Maybe we could type them. That'll be great. N. Nervous. Nervous. Very good, Shaloma. S. Skeletal. Skeletal system. Very good. L. The lymphatic. Lymphatic system, which houses the uh, white blood cells, which are cells of the immune system, and the tissue fluid that builds, bids, or keep all these uh, tissues moist. Um, I. Intestine. Intestine, which is part of another in organ system. Mm -hmm. I stands for, it includes your the skin. Here. System. It includes your skin here and nails, the integumentary. The integumentary. Yeah, integumentary. Now, Shaloma, I see you mentioned the immune system. Actually, well, the immune system, because of the fact it, it really comes under, well, you could say partially the cardiovascular system in terms of the cells and so on, right? Because the white blood cells go form part of blood itself. Yeah, so no, 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 I'm not mad at you because I, to be honest, I make that mistake <laughs> sometimes as well, but I really stand for integumentary, uh, hair, skin and nails, right? So let's go. So U-N-S-L-I-C, we just mentioned C, cardiovascular. E. Endocrine. Endocrine system, hormones, right? Hormones, very important, yeah? And which hormone, let me just show this out there. You wouldn't look at reproduction until about the next six weeks. But which hormone is very important for uterine contractions? It causes you to get that little bundle of joy out. But, and it's the same one that is responsible for the drawdown of milk. It begins with O and it rhymes with boxytocin. Oxytocin. Excellent. Yes, yes, very good. Oxytocin, yeah. So that is um, oxytocin. Uh, so do remember that one, uh, you know, very important in terms of uterine contractions. So when you, ha when you hear, you know, somebody undergoing contractions, uh, it's because of the release of that hormone oxytocin, right? So do remember that. So U-N-S-L-I-C-E-D, uh, well, somebody mentioned it as well. The D digestive. stands for digestive. digestive. Is digestion important? What do we use? What is important about digestion? Why do we need to digest food? It helps break down food and it um, gives us energy. Well, the digestion, it, it breaks down the food, correct? And it provides nutrients for us. And then we, correct, um, dot, 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 we break it down and we get the energy. Very true. All right. So, so then piggybacking on that, why do we breathe? Why do we breathe in oxygen? Why do we breathe at all? Is it necessary for us to breathe? Why do we breathe in oxygen? What do we do without oxygen we get? What do we do with it? Three words. We use oxygen to break down food. Yeah, we use it to break down food. Very good. You know, some people might remember, you know, so when you think about it, oxygen plus there's this oftentimes used equation, glucose, C6H12O6, you know, plus oxygen gives you six carbon dioxide, six water plus energy. And that's why we use oxygen. That's why we breathe it in. So what happens then if you're, Stop breathing. It's a cascade of things, right? You stop breathing, the oxygen doesn't go in. Therefore, you're not able to break down food. You're not able to make energy. And then if you're not able to make energy, your body then, all the organs will not begin to function in terms of muscle contraction. When you're looking at the smooth muscle in your gut, that will stop. And if all of those things stop, the next, what will happen next? 
Holy organ shut down. What will happen next? Dot, 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 dot. You will die. You will speak with the ear. Yeah, suddenly you find yourself talking with the ancestors, right? So very important in terms of food and breathing. U-N-S-L-I-C-E-D-R. Reproductive. Reproduction, very good. The other R, we just spoke about it. <gasps> respiratory. Respir respiratory or respiration. Respiratory. Very good. The last one, M. Muscular. The muscular system. The muscular system works with two other systems in terms of bringing about movement. Which other two organ systems does it work with to bring about the movement? The respiratory and the arm. Um, I hear what you're saying. Respiratory yeah. because you have to bring in oxygen to and the for muscle, for muscle yeah. contraction. Maybe I should have qualified the statement. Which two does it directly work with? You know what you said is quite true because it does work with the respiratory because you need the oxygen, which is used for muscle contraction. But which one it works directly with? Somebody says, um, it's skeletal and nervous system. Correct. So you have muscular, skeletal, and nervous. Always remember those three go together. And if anyone goes down, yeah, you'll suddenly find yourself very weak and you're not able to move. Because for movement, all three of them have to be clicking. The muscular, skeletal, and nervous system. Let's get back to the heart. So the heart, right, a muscular, it consists of cardiac muscle. And let's have a look at what cardiac muscles look like. They are short and thick. And they are also striated, or they have stripes on them. Notice is, you know, it's not smooth. They have these stripes. What are these things here? These dark bands. Right? They are known as some kind of discs. What type of discs are they? Intercalated discs. Very good. Intercalated discs. And what do they do? What does the intercalated disc do? What do they help? Well, when we reach the electrical conduction of the heart, they actually help get the electrical conduction to, to spread throughout the entire heart. So these intercalated discs, they are more associated with the electrical activity of the heart itself. So this is another image showing um, cardiac muscle. And the car when you look at the heart, it contains a lot of mitochondria. Now in the cell, what is a mitochondria? What is that associated with? Give me one word that begins with E. Energy. Energy, energy, right? Every time I think about energy, what do I think about? All due respect, if he's a relative or somebody. Um, why is that fellow? He uh, is, um, he's make some, some claims as, to, as natural uh, medicines that he makes, you know? And you have this video called Energy, Energy on YouTube. Oh, yes. yes, Mr. Sears, I, I hope I'm not insulting everyone, if anyone, if it's their relative. But if ever you see a feeling depressed, just go to YouTube, Carl says energy, and have a look at the video. It will bring a smile to your face. I digress. Let's continue. So because of the fact cardiac muscle contracts continuously, it has a lot of mitochondria present in it because of the fact that mitochondria, very important for energy. So muscle contraction. It is similar to skeletal muscle, except the stimulation, these M cells are spontaneous. Now, do you, does your heart ever stop? When you're sleeping, do, does your heart stop or does it continually beat? It continually beats. So therefore, is it under conscious or unconscious, you know, control of your body itself? Unconscious. Right. Unconscious. Right. And, oh. And which part, of the, which part of the nervous system is that one in terms of unconscious control? So your brain? Right, so it does involve your brain, yes. So which part specifically, the autonomic nervous system? Right, as the name implies, auto, autonomic, automatic. So that is the one, the autonomic controls the activity such as your brain, such as breathing, um, such as the beating of the heart, and also um, such as the movement of food tree that the autonomic nervous system. Very important to remember there. All right. So now let's look at the gross anatomy of the heart. So where is the heart located? This region here. Right in the middle of their chest, what it goes by a particular name, and it also contains the word media in it. 
midi à the mediastinum. Very good. So this area between the chest is known in the center of the chest is the mediastinum. This dark area shown here on the X-ray. What what are these two dark lobed areas here? What do you think they are? Those are the lungs. The lungs. <laughs> Correct is right. So the heart then, you can see, this is the outline of the heart shown here. Right? So, so the apex or the tip of the heart points in which direction? It always points to the left. So that's how you could actually tell anatomically which side is the left side or which side is the right side. All right? So you always look at the heart and where the apex or the tip of the heart points, you know, this is the left side and over here would be the right side. Particularly useful when you're looking at x-rays so you don't hold it the wrong way. So you look for certain visual cues. So you look at the outline of the heart. Notice it's pointing, a kind of pointy part down here. What muscle is this one here? This is a muscle that is very important for breathing. And begins with D. Diaphragm. As a diaphragm, yeah. So the heart sits on top of the, the diaphragm as shown here. Mm, right? Okay. And this, of course, this is your clavicle that is shown here. And that's the vertebral, your vertebral column, which is continuous uh, in terms of your spine, continuous with your brain itself. So the location, it is medial to the lungs, which means it's located more along the midline where the lungs are concerned, superior to the diaphragm, it's above the diaphragm and anterior to the thoracic vertebra. These are the vertebra to the back. So anterior means towards the front of the vertebra. Mm -hmm. Right, the diaphragm. Very great. Thanks a lot there. Well done um, for answering there on the uh, Shaloma on the chat. Now let's look. We see some letters here. What do they stand for? What does SVC stand for? VC, as related, it's a vessel that flows into the heart, into the right atrium. That's the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava. Very good. And which one? Why do they call the superior? Now, there are two. There's the superior and the inferior vena cava. Why do they call it su the superior, superior, and inferior, inferior? So because superior is to the top and inferior is to the bottom. Anything above the level of the heart, right, in terms of venous return, it's from, it comes via the superior. And anything from below the level of the heart, it returns via the inferior vena cava. Very good. RA stands for which part of the heart? Usually blood is, mm -hmm, go ahead. Right ventricle. Right. So RA RV, or right at right. right you're quite right. No, you're quite right. RV stands for right ventricle and RA stands for the right atrium. Very good. Now, PA, what does that sound? Um, so here we see these, these um, vessels going to the lungs. Pulmonary artery. Very good, the pulmonary artery. Now, in terms of arteries, arteries usually carry oxygenated or deoxygenated blood. Arteries. Deoxygenated. Well, it's only one that carries deoxygenated blood, which is this one here. And I think you're drawing parallel to that. But usually blood in the arteries are usually oxygenated with the exception of the pulmonary artery. The pulmonary artery is the only artery that doesn't have oxygenated blood. Veins usually carry deoxygenated blood because they return the blood to the heart itself. So as a rule, when blood leaves the heart, it leaves as well from the arteries. And when it brings it back, it comes back via veins. So here it is. When they were looking to name this, they had a toss up. Now it carries deoxygenated blood because this blood is coming back from the body via the systemic circulation and it is entering the heart. So it comes via the superior and inferior vena cava as shown here. It's entering the right atrium. It goes to the right ventricle. Now it is leaving via these vessels. Now they had a choice to call it either the pulmonary artery or the pulmonary vein, but they chose to use the naming culture where as blood leaves the heart, blood leaves via arteries. So they chose that. That's why they call this one pulmonary artery. But these are the only arteries in the body that carry deoxygenated blood. So in terms of a definition of an artery, you would see it. Arteries carry oxygenated blood with the exception of the pulmonary artery. And the blood that is returned then, it's oxygenated blood. It comes back via what? PV. 
What does PV stand for? Pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein. And it enters via the left atrium or the left ventricle. Which one do you think? Oh. Which one? The, atri the left atrium or the left ventricle? Which one do you think the blood it, it comes in when it's returning from the lungs? The left atrium. Correct is right. The, the word atria itself, you know, when you go into a hotel, I know where the desk is, and you see the people behind the desk say, hey, how are you going? Welcome to, 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 to the Hilton, right? Or whichever hotel you go to. That area is actually called the atria, the atrium. And the atrium, plural is atria. Atrium means is a welcoming area. So always remember, when blood comes into the heart, it will always come into that welcoming area, either the right atria or the, right, or the left atria. It doesn't come in direct to the ventricle. The ventricle is, is, you know, is after it goes to the atria, then it goes to the ventricle. That is very important to note. All right? So the blood then returning from the lungs by the pulmonary vein, it enters the left atrium and then left ventricle, and it leaves via the major artery of the heart. What is the major artery of the heart called? It's one. It's just one, uh, you know? And the it begins, aorta. The aorta. Very good. What's the blood pressure in the aorta? you know, at the aortic arch. So like right around here, what do you think the blood pressure is? Is the one blood pressure that you know for normal? What's the normal blood pressure then? 120, 120 over 80. Correct is right, 120 over 80. So at this region here, it's 120 over 80. That's the blood pressure. Good. Let's look at the pericardium. So you have this pericardium coming from the word cardia. Whenever you hear about cardia, what does that refer to? It refers to the heart. Could you think of other words that refer to other organs? When you hear the term pulmonary, what does that refer to? Pulmonary. We just looked at it. All right. So pulmonary, we we're talking about the arteries. Where do these arteries go to? Lungs. The lungs, yeah. yeah. So whenever you hear the word pulmonary, it's associated with the lungs. All right, so in this case, we're looking at the uh, pericardium. So cardia refers to the lungs. Peri means around. So the pericardium is a membrane around the lungs. And why do you think you need a membrane along, around the lungs for? Well, it's for protection. Protection against what? If, it did, if you didn't have a sac around the lungs, what would it rub up against? Based on this image, what do you think it will rub up against? What organ oh, that you could see? I will rub up on you, think. The heart, sir. These, heart. So the heart, correct. So the pericardium. So it, okay, now this is actually um, a little misleading because the, the ribs are actually above the heart. So the, the heart is actually inside the rib cage. So these ribs are seeing here. So that was a very good, um, based on what you're seeing here, it does look like it rub, but the heart is actually under these ribs shown here, it's inside. So think about it like a, you know, like a bowl and it's inside the bowl itself, right? So the heart is inside. So there's, it has like, a, like an opening in the rib cage and this is where the heart is. So these two structures to the back, these two organs, what are they called again? These two big ones in the back here, you have one on the left, one on the right. Lungs. The lungs. The lungs. Yeah. So if it didn't have that protection, it would rub against the lungs. And what would happen if it rubs up against the lungs? If something continuously rubs and rubs and rubs, what would happen? Yeah. It would tear, very good. And if your heart tears, what would happen then to the blood that is inside your heart? It will go all It would come out. And that, that term is known as hemorrhaging. Would that be a problem? Yeah. Yeah, that would be a big problem. Oh, yeah. And your blood pressure will begin to drop. And to compensate for that, what your heart will do, it'll start a beat faster. And because of the gash, it will continue to hemorrhage. So it's a vicious circle. Your blood is flowing out. How many liters of blood do we have in the body, by the way? A, 1, B, 5, or C, 10 in an average adult? Five, sir. Five liters of, which is not a lot. So you could just imagine if you're hemorrhaging and there's blood coming out, right? And your, your heart beating faster, trying to keep the blood pressure up. More blood is coming out. What will happen eventually? Dot, 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 dot. You're actually going to shock, 
right? And you'll go, eventually you're going to cardiac arrest and then you'll be speaking with your ancestors. So to prevent that, your body, which is a very remarkable machine, not only does it have fat around the heart, but it has this coating, right? That prevents it from rubbing directly onto it. And there's also, a, it's a layer of fluid that's present in this, um, this protective coating. Think about it like, imagine you're full of balloon with water and you take your fist and you push it into the balloon. That's how this pericardium actually looks like. So it has a layer, then it has fluid, and then there's the outer layer. So your heart is beating and it is prevented from actually rubbing up against the lung itself. So it's a very nice structure there. Now this, what we're looking at here, this is a cadaver heart. So this is from a cadaver, a preserved specimen. So this is what you all will probably see when you are doing anatomy. If you all have labs, anatomical, so it's a preserved specimen. And that's why it has this color associated, it has this brownish color. So it's preserved by the perfusive tissues with formaldehyde. That's why it looks this color. All right, so here's the heart again. The endocardium, so this is like a cross section to the heart muscle itself. Myocardium is the middle, the endocardium. So the, in here, this is where blood flows. This is the inside. So in a, if we were to draw a parallel with this structure here, what we're looking at here would be this wall. So this, the, the muscle of the heart is known as myocardium. Again, cardia referring to heart and myo actually refers to muscle. So the myocardium is shown in the middle here. And then what do we have? In the inside, you have the endocardium, and to the outside, you have epicardium. Could you think of another structure where the word epi is used from your integumentary system or your skin? Is there a layer that has epidermis? Very good, and that's on the outside. So always remember the epicardium is to the outer, is the outer layer, whereas the endocardium is the inner layer of the heart itself. Okay, so now we're continuing in terms of the chambers of the heart. The atria, we mentioned that, these are the receiving chambers. The auricle, these are the protruding chambers. So actually the heart bulges out. So this is the auricle here, this bulge. Then you have the right atrium. You have the SA node. This is associated with the electrical activity of the heart. We'll speak to that in a little bit. The superior and inferior vena cava, they bring blood from the systemic circulation into the heart itself. The coronary sinus. So this is the coronary sinus is the junction of the coronary vessels on the outer surface of the heart. You always have to remember the heart is both an organ, it's an organ, and it's also, uh, well, it's a muscle and it's an organ. It has a specific function of circulating blood throughout the body. But remember, it has tissue associated with it. So you have to keep that tissue alive. So there's this circulation in terms of a branch off of the aorta that goes around and supplies blood to the muscle of the heart. So if, so all of these muscles themselves, on the outer layer of the heart, there's a circulation that brings blood to the tissue to keep it alive. Because one of the things with blood of the functions, what are some of the functions of blood? Somebody tell me, what are some of the functions associated with blood? To transport nutrients throughout the body. Transport nutrients, that's one thing, yes. What else? Mm -hmm. So to keep the body warm. Correct. So it spreads heat. Yes. What? Anything else? One more in terms of um, oxygen. Transport. Oxygen. Um, yeah. Oxygen. Yeah. Transport right. Oxygen. Transport oxygen. That's one of the major functions. Quite so. So all of these things that the blood do, and that's why the tissue of the blood it needs to get nutrients. Because that nutrient, those nutrients, remember we mentioned after digestion, you know, the nutrients pass into the blood. The blood carries it to the, all the cells in your body. And in the cell, what happens in the cell? In the side of, well, one of the major reactions that occur is called glycolysis, which is the breakdown of sugars. So you start with a sugar and the sugar is broken down in the cytoplasm to pyruvate. And then pyruvate is shuttled into the mitochondria where it is then where it is used to generate ATP. So usually for one glucose molecule, you have the generation of 32 to 36 ATP, 
right? Uh, three is done at the level of the cytoplasm, and the other 30 to 33 is done at the level of the mitochondria. So therefore, food breakdown occurs in the cell itself. That's very important to take note. So that is why you have a circulation that brings blood to the tissue of the heart itself. Why? Because when, that, when the nutrients are brought, the cell itself, at the level of the cell, they generate the cells, right? They generate ATP. And that ATP is used for contraction of this muscle, of the muscle that is present in the cardiac muscle itself. So if you didn't have that circulating blood bringing, um, bringing nutrients to this muscle, well, the heart would actually stop. And that is not a good condition to be in at all. This is us showing the gross anatomy. Again, this is a cadaveric heart, which is why it's this color. So notice this is a preserved heart as opposed to this is what the heart looks like, this color. This is a, a recently, um, the recently removed heart and you know, in section, this is, this is what the tissue color normally looks like. But this one is actually a preserved specimen, all right? So that's why it, it has this color associated with it. So some of the other structures um, in the right ventricle, you have uh, the right ventricle, the pulmonary trunk. In the left, it goes via the aorta and it goes into the systemic circulation. So from the right ventricle, pulmonary trunk goes to the lungs. From the left ventricle, it goes to the aorta and then it goes to the systemic or general circulation. So that's why they say with the heart, it has a double circulation. Blood passes through the heart twice. It comes in via the inferior and superior vena cava, enters into the right atria, goes down to the right ventricle, then it goes via the pulmonary artery, goes to the lungs, returns via the pulmonary vein into the left atria, left ventricle, then it leaves the aorta via the aorta and goes into the systemic arteries. Sorry, systemic circulation, which is, it goes throughout the entire body. So now, the, because of the fact that the blood is oxygenated, it could go throughout the body. And again, that oxygen is critical because it needs you, your body needs it to break down food. So that oxygen is carried, and very importantly, yeah, it's carried throughout the body. It gets into the cells. The cells take the oxygen, takes the glucose. Glucose is just one example. You have other food classes um, in terms of fats, lipids, right? Proteins, you know, that's when things are really bad, you then you'd go for protein metabolism, but they are broken down and ATP is generated as a result. But that oxygen is critical for that. So let's look at the gross anatomy. So the aorta on the outer surface, as I'm showing you on the outer surface, you have the left and right coronary arteries. And they then, the left coronary goes further and it divides into the circumflex and the anterior interventricular, the posterior and right marginal for the right coronary artery. So if I, the coronary arteries, these are the coronary arteries. Uh, they run on the outside of the heart and the coronary vein. Let me ask this question. Why do they have it labeled red and blue? Which one do you think is the coronary artery and the coronary vein. This one I'm touching here. Is this the coronary mm -hmm. artery or vein? This is the artery very the good? Artery, sir. And this one down here is the vein. 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 So does this mean blood is blue? It means no. it's oxygenated. oxygenated. So deoxygenated blood, is it blue? Because here they're showing it blue. Is blood ever blue? No, sir. No. You yes. sure? Look at your it's wrist. Look at, look at your green. wrist. Everybody looking at the wrist? Yeah. Yes, you're not seeing something that looking green? Yeah. Yeah. And that mean that not your blood green? No. That's your vein. No. Your vein. Okay. So that mean then that blood in your veins is green, not so? Yes, sir. That what it means. That what it means? Yes, sir. You sure? Yeah. No, sir. No. Let me ask this other question. Let me ask this other question. Have you ever seen green or blue blood? You don't think then that no, if, it, if it was blue or green, you don't think sometime or the other, somebody got cut, you should be able to see it either green or blue? Yes. But have you ever seen green or blue blood? No, sir. 
No, no sir. Okay, I hear what you're thinking, sir. Well, maybe the blood has this high affinity for oxygen so that as soon as you get a cut, even if it's green, it sucks up all the oxygen from the air and it turns red. But that doesn't really happen. So right? it's because that um, it's being smaller. No, the reason why it just appears green or blue when you look at your wrist. And what you're really seeing, that is the blood going through your vein and you're seeing it through the vein, the membrane of the vein then, and through your skin. And it appears, so it's an illusion then if, if you want to think about it like that. It gives the color green. And that's what you see there. But blood is never blue or green. What do you do during your professional career? If, if you see they bring in somebody and they're bleeding and you see you look on the gurney and you see green blood, what do you do? I will say. I would run because I would think it's awesome. I will run. <laughs> so run, run, run far and run fast. Because yeah, because that is I would not think normal. that has that, that yeah, is not normal. Them. And don't stand up and ask questions when things are yeah. normal, right? No, but so we as black people, so we running for sure. Yes. So whenever you see green blood, somebody come in and they're bleeding green or blue, don't ask no questions. Um, excuse me. Um, do you know that you have green blood? No, no, no. You run. Run and just keep running, right? And then look look on the news and see what play out. But blood is never blue or green. Always remember that. But the reason why they put it blue and green here is just to let you know where deoxygenated, to identify the vessels where deoxygenated blood is running and where oxygenated blood is running. So for instance, this one is red and is the main artery coming out of the heart that goes into the systemic circulation. So which artery do you think this is? Five letters and it begins and ends with an E. Aorta. The aorta. This one's this is a vein because it's coded blue. And this one comes from the systemic circulation. Um S V C. Superior vena cava. Excellent. Superior vena cava. This one goes to your lungs. Oh no, this returns from the lungs, sorry. Right? It's, no, it, it's, it goes to the lung because it's carrying deoxygenated blood. And what is it called? It's carrying deoxygenated blood, it's going to the lungs. P, P pulmonary A, artery. Pulmonary artery, right? Very good. But in terms of the coronary circulation, so these, it refers to, if you notice on the outside, and this brings nutrient to the tissue itself. Right? And then it takes it away again when it becomes deoxygenated and waste, it removes it via the uh, coronary vein. So these are the coronary arteries and coronary veins. You, you oftentimes you hear some people might have a coronary, you know, in terms of a heart attack, as when you have blockages on these arteries or veins, right? Coronary artery. So sometimes you have a bypass. So what do bypasses do? They have to bypass these are very blockages. Sometimes it's not, they can't put in, let's say, a stent or something like that, something that opens up the passage. So what they'll do, they'll take a graph. Usually it's from your thigh. They get another artery and they sew it on. They graft it from here to here. Let's say if the blockage was there. And that's why they call it a bypass because it goes around. It goes around the area where the clog is. Okay, so now the valves. What, is, what do the valves do in your heart? They prevent what from occurring? Backflow of blood. The backflow of blood. And again, it's a very nice specimen. It's a recent specimen. Notice how it's red and shiny. And in terms of the valves that you have, atrioventricular valves. Where do you think the AV valves or the atrioventricular valves, they lie between what two areas in the heart? I'll give you one. One is the atria and the other one is the? Ventricle. 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 Yeah, that's why they call them AV valves. And you have the tricuspid and bicuspid. Tri because it has three parts to it, making up this one. And the bicuspid because it has two. So bi usually means two, tri means three. Could you think of a word that has three, tri in it? In, let's say it's from your days in maths. It's a structure that has three lines associated with it. Tri triangle a triangle yes have three sides right and think about something here is right that has two wheels tricycle a tricycle, tricycle. right for try and for if it has two it's tricycle. called a bicycle, a bicycle. yeah <laughs> so try meaning three 
in the case of a tricycle and by meaning two in the case of a bicycle. Yeah, very good. So this is us showing the atrioventricular valve, called the attendee. So you have these tendons that hold on to the leaflets to prevent them from turning inside out. You don't want them turning inside out. They have to be oriented in a particular way. And here again, you're looking at the valves, the semilunar valves, the pulmonary and aortic valves, and it has three parts to it, three cups, cusps or leaflets associated with these valves. So pulmonary versus systemic. Pulmonary, with the pulmonary, where does the blood go to? Which organ? Your pulmonary yeah. circulation. So the, the pulmonary, lungs. it goes to the lungs, very good. Yeah. And the system, it goes where? To your entire? Yeah, body. In, it goes to the entire body. body, correct. How many lungs do you have? Two. Okay, let me rephrase Two. that question. In a normal adult, how many lungs do you have? Two. Two. Why? Why not one? You, well, you have two because you need one for a word that begins with B. Breathe, so breathe. Yes, that is true. I'll give you a hint as well. You need it because you need beep, beep, beep. beep. It's hard, beep. 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 Well, you know, it's make, okay, backup I was Blood looking pressure. for. No, I was looking for backup. You know, when a truck reversing, how it's make that noise. Beep, beep, beep. You know those trucks? Yes? No? In no, reverse? Sir. When they put in reverse gear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I was trying to say back. I thought maybe somebody would have called that for backup. So you need it for backup. So in case something gone wrong with one, you have another one. Could you think of any other structure, anybody, where you have two, you know, two mm -hmm. over the kidneys? The kidneys yes. Yeah. And you also have with your liver, all these cells or the hepatocytes, they do the same thing. Right, so it's back up as well, which is why for persons who, if you drink a lot of alcohol, and you know, you, you hear your liver, um, you know, fails due to cirrhosis of the liver. That means it's more than 40% of your liver, it's more than 60%, sorry, of your liver gone. You know, the cells not working, right? You could function with 40% of your liver because all of these cells do the same thing. And that's another means of backup. Right, all of them doing something. So it's, you could lose 60% and your liver is still functioning. So when you hear somebody has cirrhosis and the liver is not functioning, I mean, 60% of the liver gone, right? 60% of themselves not working, right? So do keep that in mind. Your liver is a remarkable organ and it really is huge. It runs across uh, your entire body and is the largest organ by mass. I think it's larger than the brain by mass, okay? Let's get back to this. Pulmonary, right? Arteries, capillaries, veins. The pulmonary, we mentioned, carried oxygen. Oxygen poor blood, it goes from the right ventricles to the lungs. And then in, when it goes to the systemic circulation, it carries oxygen rich blood from the left ventricles. Then they go to all of the cells. We mentioned they go to the cells because when the food gets into the cell, the cell breaks down the food in order to generate energy. The energy in the form of Three letters, and what are those three letters? For energy, three letters. Universal ATP. currency, ATP. It's like a Lynx card in your body. You could use it anywhere. You go on my Royal Castle, you could use it, right? You go by KFC, you go by Rattan, you go in the mall, right? Or everywhere you go, you could use the same currency. You're just like a Lynx card in your body. One currency, one unit of energy is called ATP. Very good. The capillaries, right? They pick up oxygen and drop off CO2 in the lungs. And what is unique about the capillaries is that they are one cell thick. They're very thin, very, very thin, one cell thick. So things could pass through and around them. So that's why you have capillaries at the level of the lungs. And so that gases could actually pass, even though they do carry the blood, but gas could diffuse into the capillaries. And that's why you have oxygen. Oxygen could diffuse in, carbon dioxide could diffuse out. Veins, and again, with the pulmonary and systemic veins, they bring oxygen-rich blood from the lungs to the left atrium. But in the systemic circulation, the veins bring oxygen-poor blood from the tissues to the right atrium. So from the systemic, what vein returns blood to the heart? 
superior and inferior vena cava, right? Those are the ones that bring back blood from your systemic circulation. All right, so we've looked at the tissue itself. We looked at the different structures regarding the heart itself. We look at the blood circulation around the heart, the, which brings blood, the coronary circulation that brings blood to the heart itself. Now let's talk about the electrical conduction system. We mentioned earlier that movement, for movement, what are the three, I forgot, what are the three um, for movement to occur? What three organ systems are involved in movement? So first of all, you need muscles. So it's a muscular system. The skeletal, and nervous. And skeletal nervous. right. So oh. right, muscular, skeletal, and nervous for movement. All right. So but well, we don't have skeletal as relating to the heart. So the other one is the nervous system. When we are thinking about muscle, once you apply electrical impulse to a muscle, what does it do? Does it contract or lengthen? When you, have, when you give it an electrical impulse, what, what happens to the muscle? Does it shorten or does it lengthen? Shorten. It shortens, very good, yeah. So once you apply the electric current, it shortens. And when you remove the current, what happens? It goes back to its normal length or it lengthens. So those are the only two things a muscle could do. You apply a current, shortens, you move it, it lengthens. So that's what happens at the level of the heart itself. See this constant contraction. Now. It's very important that all the cardiac muscle cells or cardiac muscle fibers, that they contract at the same time. What would happen if they didn't contract at the same time, if they all were doing their own business? Well, if they were all contracting at different times, the heart would quiver. And when the heart quivers, that's a, proce that's a process that is known as what? I'll give you a hint. There's, there's a machine that they use to stop it. And it's called a D ECG. ECG, very good. E that is used. E electrical. That is actually used to measure the electrical activity of the heart. So you're, you're quite right in that regard. But there's a machine that they use. You know, they always show it on the um, when you're looking on the TV. Clear, and you'll see them. They put gel on it. You know, a defibrillator. A defibrillator. So therefore, based on that, so the defibrillator is used to stop the heart when it's undergoing what. What action? D means Stop. action. D, the prefix D actually means not or is a negation. So it means like not or stop or anything like that. So when the heart is actually in fibrillation, when it's quivering, when it's quivering, it's known as fibrillation. And to stop the quivering, you use a defibrillator. So you know you say clear, and then they apply this electrical current. And amazingly, one of the amazing, one of the things with the heart, when the SA node, the SA node is really the pacemaker. And how I remember it, SA, the two letters I think about South Africa. When I think about Africa, you know, I think about rhythm, you know, you know, and that's how I remember the SA node is a, is a rhythm maker or the pacemaker for the heart itself. When you when the heart is quivering or when all the cells are not contracting at the same time, that's a problem. No blood will be moving through the aorta. You're not pumping out any blood. For blood to efficiently move through the aorta, all the cells have to be contracting at the same time. So what you have is this electrical system that goes to virtually every cell providing these electrical impulses almost at the same time, because one thing you have to appreciate is the atria contract first, then the ventricles, and of course, the right and then the left, right? And so you do have a little difference in terms of the pattern, but is on the order of microseconds in between each, right? But in general, the heart has to beat constantly with a rhythm. And that rhythm, very important, it could be likened to, you all remember your sports day back in the day? You all had sports day in school? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You all remember, yes, remember marching when you used to march? Yes, yes sir. sir. How did they get everybody to march in time? What they used to do? They, they used to have a timer. Left, left, right, music. Left. Yeah. And, or you used to have a little music, right? Either the DJ or somebody or a band playing him with dum 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 dum
when you think about the heart, that's what the SA node does. It provides the rhythm. This is the main, this is where the impulse is started and is spread throughout the heart in the SA node. This is the rhythm generator. Doom, doom, doom. This is like the DJ or the um, band that is playing for your sports day. So everybody then, you know, going left, you know when to go down, left, left, right, left. And that's what the SA node does. All of these others really support the SA node. The AV node, it delays the signal. The AV branches, it's, it uh, ferries the signal down the septum. The branch extends down to the apex of the heart and the Purkinje fibers. It then goes to the myocardium. So all of these really support, but the main one is really this SA node. That's the one that starts it up. So if you were to look at it here, this is the SA node located in the right atria. It initiates that impulse and the impulse passes to other parts of the heart. So this here is the AV node, atrioventricular node. It goes down the bundle branch to the Purkinje fibers. And all of the time it is going down, ultimately it covers then all of the cells of the heart. So this impulse, which is initiated in the SA node, it spreads throughout the heart and it causes it to contract and relax. And you get that, what we know as a heartbeat. If the heart, if it goes out of sync, if all the cells, or the majority of them go out of sync, the heart will begin to quiver. So it doesn't beat. It's just like, as they say, if you take jello on a plate and you're shaking it, right? It just shakes. And then to stop that, you need a defibrillator. You'll see it in your professional career. There's internal and external defibrillators. If it's open heart or let's say surgery in which the abdomen is open, they have these paddles that they put alongside the heart to give it a shock. Because as I mentioned, when electrical impulse is um, placed against the heart, it resets the SA node and it begins to you know, send the impulse in a regular interval. Or you could have the external defibrillators, which like you always see on those shows, when the doctor, you know, bowls out clear, everybody raise their hand, and then they apply that impulse to the heart itself. That's a restart the SA node. Now, why do they say clear? And then you see people hold up their hands. Why is that important? What would happen if you were touching the person when they give them that electrical shock? What would happen to you? They will get shocked. Yeah. So you will have shock. And what would happen? What what could possibly happen to your heart as well? So it could be fibrillation. Very good. Yes, very, very good. It could go into fibrillation. It could begin to quiver. So that's why it's always important if somebody, you know, gets in shock, is to let them go. You know, they'll be like, oh, God, Frankie, you're going. Frankie, you're going. Boy, don't leave me. Oh, no. no, let go, Frankie. Right? If you do fibrillator, I'll bring Frankie back. Okay? All right. ECG. This is the last thing we want to look at for today. The ECG, some people, somebody already mentioned it, the electrocardiograph. This is a measure of the electrical activity of the heart. Let's have a look at the ECG trace. Y'all will, y'all haven't done this in skills lab yet, no? In terms of the positioning of the leads and so on. No, sir. Okay, you no, all will sir. do this in, in nursing. This is a nursing skills lab. You'll probably do it uh, maybe towards the end of this year or maybe next year. All right, in terms of putting the leads. Now, you know, I, with that ECG, it tells, it detects the electrical current that goes through the heart, and there's usually a certain pattern associated with a normal heart. If something is wrong, they could actually tell by looking at it. Believe you me, there are numerous books written on it, and you could act, just by looking at it, you could tell where, okay, if something is wrong with the atria, if it's the ventricle, you know, if it's something is wrong with the SA node, just by looking at the pattern. As I said, there are numerous books on it. It's a whole field of study. But all that being said, the ECG is the way how you could tell if something is wrong with the electrical activity of the heart. This is a normal heartbeat. This is a fast heartbeat. What do you see, just using your eyes, what is different between the normal heartbeat and the fast heartbeat? What is different? So the waves. What about the waves? If you were to call one, these The P waves, I believe. Yeah, so it has more peaks as shown here. If you notice, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is a specific time interval. It has six peaks. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's a PQRST wave. And it's, it's related to specific points on the wave itself. That's why they call it a PQRST wave. 
right? But this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine peaks. So this points to a fast heartbeat. What about this one? Comparing it to the normal, what would you say about the peaks? Does it have more or less than the normal? Less. Less, less peaks, right? So this one has six, this one has four. So what about, oh. mm -hmm. And the irregular, look at the distance between the peaks. Notice this one is short, this one is long, this one is in between, and that's why it's an irregular heartbeat. So a fast heartbeat, this is known as a condition known as tachycardia, and a slow heartbeat is known as bradycardia. bradycardia. Very good, bradycardia, or bradycardia, as some people say, quite right, yeah. So tachycardia, bradycardia, fast and slow. So the P wave, so the P wave, which is the first part. So the whole wave is called a PQRST because each part has a name T. This is the P, this is Q, R, the points, S and T. The P wave, is, it shows you the depolarization of the SA node. This is where the atria contract, the QRS. So going from this QRS, ventricular depolarization, and the T wave shows the repolarization. And as I said, based on comparison with a normal, if something is wrong with your heart, they could see that something is wrong based on the trace that is made. So it's really a very, um, it's, a, it's used as a diagnostic tool um, concerning the electrical activity of your heart. So you mentioned this as well, fibrillation. When you have these irregular contractions, and this points to the SA node not functioning normally. So they will try to reset it by giving you a defibrillator because if left unchecked, it could lead to death. So the heart songs, the heart songs, uh, you will, will see a recording on the, um, in the classroom itself in terms of the heart songs. So you could actually go there and see it. If not, just type in YouTube heart songs and you will hear what it sounds like. Or if you have a stethoscope, well, you could actually call one of your family members, colleagues or significant other and listen to it. So you get these songs. The AV valves make the first one, which is the lub and the pulmonary valves make the dub. So the atria, which makes sense, blood comes in the atria first. So the AV, as it goes in, it makes that lub. The aortic and pulmonary valve, as it's leaving the heart, you get that dub song. Lub, dub, 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 lub, dub, lub, dub. Yeah? All right. Electrical activity measured via the uh, ECG. Now, blood pressure is a measure of the blood that is going through. Arterial blood pressure, of course, is measured as an instrument that you use where you wrap it around, you use a stethoscope, you wrap a cuff around the arm itself, the, above the elbow, and then you pump it up and you listen until you hear the first flow. Have you all done that one in skills lab just yet? No, sir. Okay. No, even, sir. even though now I hear what you're saying, sir, but have the electrical one where you just put it on and it just, you know, it does it electric, um, it does it automatically. And um, you'll find that in on the ward, you'll see the automatic one. But just in the event that you can't find one, you know, some people are always borrowing or it goes to another um, ward, you know, and you just can't find it. Well, you could do it use, using the other means. So that instrument that is actually used to measure blood flow is known as a sigmomanometer. And that is the one where you, it, with the inflatable cuff, and that gives you the blood pressure. So do you remember the name of it? This PHY is pronounced like, what's the other name for a banana? A fig. A fig. 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 So it's, it's like a fig with a S sound. So you say sphygmomanometer, right? Let me hear you say it. Sphygmomanometer. Sphygmomanometer. Yeah, so it's sphygmomanometer. You'll get it, just keep practicing for no apparent reason. You know, as you're walking, just keep saying, speak my man, Somebody call you, you just say, speak my man, <laughs> And you'll, you'll get it right. So the sigma manometer, it measures the blood pressure. That's the instrument that is used. All right. And that's it for the, um, the lecture part of the lab today. So let me just stop the recording.